Welcome back to New Day Northwest. We definitely want to salute all the men and women in uniform who are serving our country right now because we recognize that that service can come with personal sacrifice. In her new memoir, The Fine Art of Camouflage, author Lauren K. Johnson shows us the reality of a woman at war. Lauren joins me now. Thank you for writing this book and coming here. You said, first of all, that the military is a family business. Tell us about that. Yes, so I, I grew up in a military family, starting with my grandfathers back in the World War II era, and then my mother served. She was an Army Reserve nurse and deployed in support of Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, when I was seven years old. Oh, wow. So that kind of formed the foundation of my childhood, and then I went on and joined the family business on the heels of 9-11 myself. Wow. And thank you for everything you've done to keep our country safe. I have to ask, as a child growing up with your mom being deployed, I imagine, that had to be hard. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> my mom was my person. So, yeah. you know, having her suddenly plucked out of our life, you know, it was a very different era. It wasn't mm -hmm. like when I joined in post 9-11 service where deployments were you know, basically a given, mm -hmm. there was an element of predictability to them. That was not the case in, oh, wow. in 1990 and certainly as a reservist. So her orders were for an undetermined length of up to two years, which I wasn't privy to that information as a seven year old, but I didn't know when, when she would be back. Oh. But yet you still knew how important this was, that you decided I'm going to go in as well. Where did you do when you enlisted? Um, so I went through ROTC oh, you in did? college. Yes, awesome. I and commissioned as an officer after graduating college and um, joined the Air Force as a public affairs officer, which is basically like PR yeah. for, for the Air Force. So this is actually an interesting experience because I um, part of my job was setting other folks up to do interviews like this. But not and yourself. Here I am. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, look at you. There you are with, in uniform. Where was this taken? Uh, so this was in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. This was outside a, a schoolhouse in Gardez in Paktia province, which was just down the road from where I was stationed at Forward Operating Base Gardez. Mm -hmm. I had another, I had a friend uh, I worked with in, in this industry. She also, she was a reservist, but she also did PR. It was very hard, she said, being a woman, being deployed. You're, you were one of seven women on a team of 80 people. What was that like? It, it was isolating in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and, and my team was wonderful. I, I was very fortunate in that regard, and you know, a lot of women and men in the military deal with horrible things that, that you shouldn't have to worry about, like military sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. I did not have that experience, thankfully. Yeah. Um, I did deal with some harassment, but for the most part, it was relatively mild. For me, where my gender was most pronounced was in my interactions with the local people. Uh, Af yeah. Afghanistan and the area where I was is a very conservative province. Mm -hmm. So they weren't used to interacting with, with women in, mm -hmm. an, in a place where power dynamics came into play. Yeah. So the, the reception varied widely. <laughs> yes, I, I'm sure. Sometimes you know, the, the folks would come up to our group and be excited to see us because we you know, brought money and mm -hmm. development to the province. But then they noticed I was a woman. And some of them were like, ooh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do with this. And, oh, wow, and some yeah. actually skipped right over me and shook the hands of the, the male soldiers next to me. Some kind of like warily shook my hand, like I should you know, probably pay attention because yeah. they might give me money if right. I'm nice to them. You knew how to play the game, as it were, yeah. in a way. And then some were just like really excited, like, oh, oh. Ooh, a woman, I want to meet her. Oh, I think it that's It was really great. interesting. That is great. Um, after you left the military and you gave us your service, you were diagnosed with chronic adjustment disorder. What is that? So the, the best description I found for it is like PTSD light, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. essentially not checking all the boxes for, for PTSD. Okay. When I reflect back on that experience, what I really think is, is a better fitting term for, for what I experienced is moral injury, mm -hmm. which is a relatively new term. Moral injury. Moral injury. Okay. So refers not to a physical injury, obviously, or even a, a psychological injury like we think of with PTSD, but an injury of the soul. Yeah. So where you feel like you've done something or witnessed something that comes into conflict with your morals. Mm -hmm. And my job in Afghanistan, playing that PR role, I was essentially the filter between what was happening and what I was experiencing happening and what both the Afghan public 
and the international and American public were seeing what was happening. And I felt like I wasn't being forthright with that information mm -hmm. and was not you know, providing the information that those audiences needed to make informed decisions about what they were doing. Such a fascinating topic. I'm assuming you go through it all in this book. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for writing this and sharing yourself. I know it's hard to step out from behind the camera, but we are so glad that you did. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. The book is The Fine Art of Camouflage. Check it out.